I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Dateable listeners 10% off your first order with code Dateable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So So what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATEABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl and I have that in common. She's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that hey, he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash dateable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. If you didn't know already, in our off season, we launched a premium series called the Y series, where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We've had some great feedback on how actionable these episodes are. So check it out on our website under the tab Y series, or you can now buy directly from iTunes music. Another exciting announcement is that we revamped our website. We now have written stories from past guests and writers, and we have playlists to organize episodes by topics. These playlists can also be found on SoundCloud. So check out all the content we now have on datablepodcast.com. The Datable Podcast features real stories from real people of how they make modern dating work or not. I'm your host, Yue, former dating coach turned dating insider, if you will. On each episode, you'll hear commentary from my producer, Julie Kraftchik, and other surprise co-hosts. This episode of Datable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. 500 Brunches connects like-minded people with similar interests to meet in real life over brunch. You answer a quick questionnaire about your interests and how you spend your time, and then they'll match you in small groups of six to eight at a brunch spot in San Francisco. Get a free entry into a brunch now by signing up at 500brunches.com and using the code DATEABLE. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. This episode is going to be a little bit different because instead of a dating story, we're talking about an issue and a topic that not many of us discuss actually. It's about body positivity. How do you view your body? What are some of the insecurities you have about yourself? And have you thought about how that affects your dating life? So today we have Natalie Carey here who wrote a book called Every Body Beautiful. About a few months ago, Julie came to me and said, I read this incredible book. It's about body positivity. You know, we need to get her on the show. Coincidentally, a month <laughs> later, Natalie comes to um, the dance studio I teach at, Euphoria, and she's like, hey, I'm doing this like body positivity theme um, social media uh, post. Would you want to collaborate? 
So we collaborated separately, and then we put the two and two together. And was like, okay, this is so serendipitous. Yep. We have to, to have her. get Natalie here. <laughs> yes. So just a little background on Natalie. She's she's wearing the best shirt right now. It says, don't grow up. It's a trap. <laughs> it is a trap. It is so freaking true. It's so true. So Natalie is 32 years old. She's been in San Francisco for six years, originally from Santa Cruz. Woo-hoo. So not too far. <laughs> And um, tell us a little bit about your background that inspired you to write this book. Yeah. um, Well, I grew up in Santa Cruz, and my mom pretty much had me on stage performing as a ballerina or in musical theater from maybe a couple of years after I started walking. There's pictures of me in, like, a t- like a white t-shirt with a sewn on fake tutu when I was <laughs> really, really little on stage mm-hmm. doing ballet. So I grew up as a ballerina. So I grew up in this community of people who are very focused on how you looked. And I have continued to dance my entire life. I took up um, weightlifting in my 20s. I started running when I was in college. Um, that's what got me into fitness. Um Yeah, I moved to Japan really randomly in my late 20s, I know, to teach English. So I lived in this country bumpkin part of Fukushima. There were no gyms, and so I downloaded P90X videos, (laughs) like, went to this random Japanese sporting goods store, bought myself some free weights and resistance bands, and was working out in my tiny Japanese apartment. (laughs) And I had never lifted weights before, and I just Mm -hmm. fell in love with it, and um, then my family and my friends started asking me for tips on, well, how do I work out and, like, how do I get healthier? And I was doing um, Weight Watchers online at the time because in Japan they put the nutrition facts a little bit differently on the food. Mm. And so I was just like, I'm going to eat all these things and have uh-huh. no idea what they are. And so I was like, all right, I need to do Weight Watchers and uh, sort of learn about nutrition a little bit better. Um, so I had started working at my apartment, started learning more about food, and people were asking me for advice. And when I came back to America, I thought I was going to go uh, back to grad school for international studies and ended up just realizing what I wake up every morning loving is helping other people to move and feel good in their bodies. If you want to help people to feel good in their bodies, you had to get to that point yourself. Oh, yeah. So yeah. tell us about that journey. Okay, so <laughs> I've really, really struggled with this my whole life. As I said, like, grow up in ballet community. Um, if you had anything that resembled a stomach roll, the girls in the locker room would, like, make fun of you behind your back. So I learned at a very early age, like, if there's something wrong with your body, you cover it up, you don't show it, or uh-huh. else the other girls are going to make fun of you. And then my ballet teachers would always pick on me and say, like, you need to lose weight. They'd have meetings with my mom, telling my mom, like, she needs to lose weight if she wants to get the better roles. Wow. And then when I was 13, this boy in my junior high class – told me, well, you know, your best friend's beautiful, but you're just plain. Whoa. And my mind was like, and my mind like exploded because I had always been like, I'm beautiful. I look great. And then he was like, well, you're just plain. And my whole 13-year-old world just like collapsed. It's crazy how like someone that means like nothing has yeah. such an impact That yeah. one you. rando, you probably don't even remember his name. What? But you Crush remember his world. comment. Yeah. 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 He, he had, I'm sure like you know, we're the same age. He has no idea that he did this and how right. it affected no me. And, like, and I'm yeah. sure I've said things to people totally. when I was younger. Absolutely. I mean, it's a form of bullying. We just didn't label right. it as that right. Right. when we yeah. were kids. Yeah, yeah. And so I just for literally two decades, I would tell people, like, well, yeah, I'm plain. And I would use it to sort of justify people's treatment of me. I never thought I was worthy of the relationships that I wanted to have. Um, I would let men that I was trying to date or was dating just disrespect me. And I would just try and be like whatever they wanted me to be because I was Mm. so desperate for a relationship and felt so worthless. Like I just didn't think that I deserved to have a relationship. And so I was just telling myself, well, I'm lucky even to have them date me. So what can I do to keep them? Because that was your self worth. Because I because I felt I just felt like I did not look good. That I wasn't mm-hmm. anything special to look at, um, and I knew that I had a lot to offer personality wise. But mm-hmm. I I didn't think that anyone would see past that. But also in the media, when they portray oh God, a girl yeah. with great personality, they're also implying that she's not beautiful. Right. Right. It's always like, yeah. oh, but she has a great personality. He's really funny. Right. That also impl- implies that they're lacking something in the looks category. Yes. I'm just reading the front cover of your, your book here and says, if she's beautiful, does that mean you're not? And I think that's a really interesting statement because I think um, 
by what media portrays is when they say someone is beautiful, it's implying what you're lacking as a normal person. Totally. You're not this person who is beautiful, therefore you're not beautiful. Right. And well, the reason I decided to put such, so I felt like it was a bold statement to put on the cover was because I feel like so many times we are shown, we're shown an image of somebody and we're told this is what's beautiful. Yep. And so if we don't look like that, then therefore we cannot be considered beautiful. Or if a guy tells us, well, I think she's hot. Well, then you don't think that I'm hot because you think she's hot. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted to try to teach people this message. Like it's not a comparison game. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody has success and they are beautiful does not mean that you cannot not also have success and be beautiful. Right. Like we can all have these good things. And we yeah. can all wish these good things for each other. But how did you get to this mindset? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> how did I get there? I think yeah, it's no, wild because I, I think yeah. a lot of people are still stuck oh, in totally. that mindset. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I so through college, um, I went to school in Los Angeles. Felt super, super out yeah. of place. Like that's growing, not gonna help. Yeah, <laughs> that's not gonna help. Growing up in Santa Cruz, I mean, I grew up in overalls and like tube uh-huh. socks with my skirts. Like when I got to college, they were like, "Oh God, she wore tube socks with her skirt." I was like, "Shoot, I hope they don't see me with my tube socks." And <laughs> right. Um, I was so out of place at my college. Um, so yeah, I just was always comparing myself to other girls, and um, everybody started talking about their eating disorders or their disordered eating or the laxatives they were taking or this crazy new diet. And I just felt like, oh man, if I need to keep up with these girls to get dates, then I got to do an eating disorder. It's what all the cool kids are doing. It's trendy. It's trendy. So, um, yeah, I actually, my junior year of college, I started binging and purging and it was, it was, I don't say I was bulimic, um, because to me it feels like it was wrapped up in all these other really damaging behaviors like I was also chain smoking and I was binge drinking and I was over exercising and I was really promiscuous and I was just doing like all of these really self-sabotaging oh actions that um yeah, a lot of people do <laughs> kind of kind of ebbed and flowed in my 20s and then a few years ago I started going to therapy for insomnia and I came in and I was like, I've got insomnia and I only need to fix this one problem. And then mm. uh, like, oh, guess what? All these other things came Unfold. up. Yep. And it like I started working on myself and started working on my anxiety. And I'm very vocal about it on my social media that I am on anti-anxiety medication and mm-hmm. it's changed my life. And mm. also therapy has changed my life. Um, yes. yes. Power to therapy. <laughs> yes. And I started to try and figure out like well how does what I know about nutrition how can this be an opportunity for me to make myself feel better about food and have it not be an enemy because I got my sports nutrition license and so I was like okay well this this is good for my body this is good fuel for my body Mm -hmm. um so I learned more about that and then I am I'm also a competitive pole dancer and I had hurt myself what (laughs) (laughs) wait what are you not I know okay so (laughs) So Amazing. I, was, I was like, I was competing in pole dancing and I tore a piece of my hip and suddenly I couldn't do the level of activity that I've been doing my whole life. Mm. And I had to come to terms with what my body was capable of and what it could like no longer do at that point. And I started to realize like, I am not the sum of like what my body looks like. I'm more than that. And so mm-hmm. let me appreciate my body. Let me take better care of it. Um, Let me, like, recognize how beautiful I am and not in relation to am I winning an award on stage or do I have abs or – yeah, so it was just this really – it was a sad moment for me that transformed into this really cool opportunity of learning to appreciate my body and what it it could be. Because it was sort of something that was taken away from you. And sometimes when you're lacking something you were used to – your whole life, that's mm. when you start appreciating oh, it. Oh, that's so true. I definitely feel that with my metabolism in my 30s, <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, when I was 16, I was eating like Doritos and Cheetos every day and still like whatever. Yes. And now I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to just know my body better. Yeah. So is that what body positivity, I know I, we hear the word yeah, body positivity yeah. a lot. Mean? Is that what it is, what you just said? Uh, no. So is that a notebook? It like, is a notebook. I, I have this <laughs> I just tell our listeners because they can't see. This is like one of those old school sixth grade like three hole punch like, notebook. Trapper, no. keeper. Trapper, no, no, keeper. No, no, trapper keeper. Trapper keeper with the 
whatever parade of sides that you can rip off. I mean, I haven't seen one of these probably since sixth grade. This is pretty hey, amazing. Hey, don't grow up. I mean, right? don't grow up. Yeah, it's a trap. Keep your trapper keepers. No, seriously. Like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, I trapper keeper, no problem. So back to body, body so positivity. to talk about. What? We're just drinking champagne. Well, so, was, I still want the definition of right, body no, positivity. Totally. So it's this... Um, Body positivity is this movement that encourages people to accept their bodies um, as they are um, to increase, like, mental health and well-being. Where did body positivity stem from? Um, If you go back, it has roots in radical feminism um, and just telling people, and especially women of a larger size, that it's okay to look a certain way. It's okay to accept your body as it is. You do not have to change your body to fit a certain stereotype. We all have insecurities. Mm -hmm. There's not one person who doesn't have insecurities about their body. What are some of the tools they can they can learn to accept their bodies because and and feel really comfortable in their own skin? Yeah, I would say um, one of them is goes back to dating. Um, If you're dating somebody, don't make comments about that person's body when you first meet them maybe wait for them to bring them up. Also, don't negatively talk about yourself. Mm. Um, not just not just on dates, but, like, don't – just don't negatively talk about yourself. Like, don't put yourself down. Um, when we tell ourselves things repeatedly, our brain starts to accept them as truth. Yep. So if you tell yourself constantly, I'm, like, a foxy lady, like, you might one day realize, like, I am I a am foxy lady. I am fucking hot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's standing in front of the mirror and yeah. talking to yourself. Yeah. yeah, so I'm actually a big fan of, like, mirror talk and, uh-huh. like, self-affirmations. Yep. Um, if you stand in front of the mirror and – Tell yourself, like, for every negative thought you have, be like, no, this is beautiful about me. And, like, Mm. even if you can't say, oh, I love this about myself, you can say, I hope that one day I love this about myself. Mm. Um, Like that. Yeah, because then it's not inauthentic and it's you, like, I'm sure you do hope that one day you love that about yourself. Um, Yes, that's one thing that people can do. Also, I really believe in eating, like, wholesome food, whatever that means to you. Like, whatever kind of food makes your body feel best and, Mm. like, most energized eat that. And I'm also a huge fan of movement. I think that any form of movement, whatever kind of movement makes you feel good, it's going to help you get into touch with your body because like bodies are like, they're built to move. Right. I'm a personal trainer. And so this is what I teach people is how do we move so that our bodies feel good. And so many of the women that I work with, I most, we work with women, um, like they tell me all the time how much better they feel in their own skin. Totally. Even though maybe nothing's changed, um, aesthetically, like they just, they're like, oh, my body can do this. And, yeah. like, I didn't know it could do this. And, like, I'm feeling muscles I didn't even know existed. And just, like, the body is this really amazing, incredible thing. And if you appreciate what it can do, then you stop worrying about what it isn't. Well, so I want to go back to that because a lot of these diet fads or, like, a P90X mm-hmm. sells results. They'll show the before and after picture mm-hmm. of someone going from bigger to smaller how do you how do we get around that mindset? Because you're saying sometimes you don't you don't actually visually see a difference, mm-hmm. but you feel the difference. So when should someone start appreciating the results of whatever they're doing? I think that the fitness industry has a really terrible habit of telling people that they must change their bodies. Mm-hmm. And that's how the fitness industry makes their money is yeah, by right. telling people you are not enough, but I can help you be enough. Yeah. So I used to do that as a trainer before I realized that's no longer the message I wanted to tell people. Um, So I try not to judge people for their fitness goals. If somebody comes to me and says, I want to lose weight or I want to be more muscular or I want to do this or I want to do that, I'm like, great. I know how to do that. I will help you. And then while we're on that journey, I, we try and dig a little bit deeper. Like, why do you really need that? Are you like, how are you feeling? How do you feel about your body now? Isn't this cool that you could do this? Um, and so there's always going to be before and after transformation pictures out there mm-hmm. because it's a natural part of It's a of, marketing right. tool. It's a marketing pool, tool and it's also like that happens. People's bodies change. Um, but I try not to focus on that with people. I try and focus more on what did we accomplish this month? I think it's really about how you feel about yourself, right? Do right. I feel stronger? Do yeah. I feel like I love myself comfortable. better? Do comfortable I feel comfortable in, in my skin? skin? Yeah. But when, what is that line of being like, I am comfortable? Because some, for some people, there is no end. 
not even about getting skinnier. I see some of my friends who are just getting more and more muscular because they're doing CrossFit or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And at what point do you say, okay, there is a limit here? I think the limit, it's a really personal choice. Um, People need to ask themselves, am I happy in this choice? Does this give me joy? Right. If you love going to the gym and you look forward to it all the time, then go. Mm -hmm. But if you use it as a punishment for yourself or if you feel really guilty about not going Mm -hmm. or if you use it to burn off calories from your guilty pleasure weekend, Mm -hmm. then you might want to reevaluate your relationship with fitness. Mm -hmm. Um, The same thing goes for food. If you constantly deprive yourself of food um, and then you feel like you have to go on a binge, reevaluate your relationship with food. Um, Yeah, and I think that that's not something that I like to tell people what is good or bad, just like I don't know. Ponder it over yeah. yourselves. Figure no, it out. Yeah. I want to relate this back to dating. Yes. Because this yeah. is what I hear all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm not dating right now because I'm trying to get in shape. Yep. And once I'm in shape, then I'll put some better photos on these dating sites. What would you say to someone like that? I would say the sexiest thing you can put on is confidence. Mm. Learning to love how you look and your body is going to make you sexier and more appealing to everyone else in the world. Um, no matter what you actually look like, no matter what the size of your gene says, um, if you can learn to appreciate what your body looks like, that's going to be the most attractive thing to people. Smiling is really attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, being friendly with people, like start conversations with strangers, like not, not the creepy strangers, but like the nice strangers, like just like talk to everybody, get to know people, put yourself out there, which is probably really difficult for people, especially when you walk around with, like, your phone there all the time as your security blanket, but, like, put your phone down, smile at somebody, just, like, say good morning to them, that's sexy. You'd Mm -hmm. be amazed at how many people I meet throughout Mm -hmm. the city just because I say good morning to them in Mm -hmm. an elevator, and then they want to talk to me because nobody's talked to them. (laughs) Right. I think that brings up a really good point, which is, we have to be present in wherever we are right now. Yeah. But also one of our previous guests said, wherever you are, that's where you're supposed to be. And I think mm. that applies to your body too. Mm-hmm. Where you are today with your body is who you're supposed to be right now. Yes. So you have to really embrace who you are today. And of course, we all have goals we're working towards. Totally. But it doesn't mean that you have to put up, put off who you are today for a better tomorrow. Right. And I think it's important to remember that everyone has these insecurities, yes. too. Like, not that that should be, I mean, obviously it's not ideal either that everyone does, but even the people that I look at that I'm like, you do not have 10 to 15 pounds to lose, Yeah, they feel it. So it's kind of like knowing that you're not alone in this and what things that you don't notice about someone else, someone else probably doesn't notice about you. Exactly. Yeah, yes. um, ju- yeah thinking back on, like, these people who've brought up to you that they're not ready to take pictures or they're not ready to date because they're not feeling in good enough shape. Um, There was this amazing conversation with this woman named Jessamine Stanley. She um, is a large woman who preaches yoga for everybody. I Mm -hmm. think that was the name of her book that she Mm -hmm. just wrote this year. And she was talking about how, well, like what happens when I get skinny? What happens when I lose those five pounds? What happens when I reach my goal weight? What then? Because really, like, what does happen then? Does your life magically change? Do you instantly meet that perfect partner? Mm -hmm. Do all of the opportunities in the world open for you? Do you get to go on all these vacations and trips you've been waiting to wear the bikini on? Like, those things don't change just because you got to your goal weight or because you finally look the way that the magazine models do. Right. Like, those things happen because you just live your life and and let them happen. Right. Um, Yeah, if you keep waiting for these opportunities to come along because you think you don't look right, you're going to let your life just pass you by. Like, this is is the only body you've got. Just, like, (laughs) just, like, appreciate, like, that's your body and, like, let it go on these adventures with you. And the person, because people always say, like, who I am now, I'm attracting different people than who I would attract if I Mm. were more comfortable in my body. Actually, if you are just who you are today, you're going to attract the same person as you would tomorrow in a different body, right? Like the right person for you Mm -hmm. would be attracted to your personality still. So it's not so much about like, like you were saying, it's not magic. The day that you reach your goal weight or whatever it is, 
one, it's never ending. Because yeah. once you reach that, you're going to want to work on something else. Right. And two, your magic, like, Prince Charming <laughs> is not just going to all of a sudden appear and be like, whoa, I just noticed you. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, happen he, like that. E- e- even if he is, like... You don't want someone, too, that only wants someone at a certain size, because then you're always struggling to, like, maintain that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I would say if you're dating somebody who can't see past um, whatever your physical appearance is or whatever you're afraid that it is or isn't, um, that they're probably not in the right mental headspace to be dating you either. So true, mm-hmm. but can we? Okay, so now that we brought that up, can we bring up the yeah. Instagram post? Because oh, I think this is a, right. so. Basically, this post went viral. Yes. he posts this picture of his beautiful wife it? in a bikini. And yeah, and like, can we what, note that like this woman is gorgeous. she's gorgeous. <laughs> yes, she's got she's got some curves. Like, like I, amazing I'm I'm in love sex. with this woman. Yeah. Like, are you, yeah, of course you're in love with her. She's beautiful. Yeah, so this was the post that this guy put up. And how um, many how many likes he got? Has it gotten? Like over forty thousand. Forty thousand. It was thirty thousand earlier today. Yeah. I believe. It just keeps continuing. This is from like August 4th, so not that long ago. Okay, it continues. Pretty yeah. So basically, it says, I love this woman and her curvy body. As a teenager, I was often teased by my friends for my attraction to girls on the thicker side, ones who were shorter and curvier, girls that the average, parentheses, basic bro might refer to as chubby or even fat. Then as I became a man and started to educate myself on issues such as feminism and how the media marginalizes women by portraying a very narrow and very specific standard of thin beauty, uh, sorry, of beauty, thin, tall, lean, I realized how many men have bought into that lie. For me, there's nothing sexier than this woman right here. Thick thighs, big booty, cute little side roll, etc. Her shape and size won't be one featured on the cover of Cosmopolitan, but it's the one featured in my life and my heart. There's nothing sexier to me than a woman who is both curvy and confident. This gorgeous girl I married fills out every inch of her jeans and is still the most beautiful one in the room. Guys, rethink what society has told you about who you should desire. A real woman is not a porn star or a bikini mannequin or a movie character. She's real. She has beautiful stretch marks on her hips and cute little dimples on her booty. Girls, don't ever fool yourself by thinking you have to fit a certain mold to be loved and appreciated. There's a guy out there who is going to celebrate you for exactly who you are. Someone who will love you like I love my Sarah. Wow, that was long. First of all, I didn't didn't even know you could post that many words on Instagram. That's a novel. Yeah. But Natalie, how do you feel about that post? Okay, so let's first acknowledge that, like, Robbie and Sarah Tripp live in our city. Okay. Um, So no talking shit. Right. (laughs) But, like, I actually, no, I I like to hold people, especially people that I don't know, in unconditional positive regard. So I like to, like, withhold judgment for the fact that these are probably good, well-intentioned people. Agreed. They, like, clearly love each other very much um so I was reading this post and there were definitely like pros and cons that jumped out to me first off I think anytime you publicly proclaim love for somebody like right on for you like let's see more of people appreciating their loved Mm -hmm. ones yeah um and showing good examples of how you show affection for people that you care about so like good on you that's great um secondly like I don't know their personal relationship so the way that he talks about his wife might be how they talk to each other true um the I think that, she is into like body positivity well, yeah she's, too. So um, she's a body positive fashion blogger right so there oh, is really? a background yes. there too oh, okay. yeah okay. so it's like no secret that she's not a size two um nobody's under that illusion and she's not trying to pretend that she's a smaller woman right um so like they might use this kind of language in their relationship right. and like every every couple is different so the way that I looked at this was how would I react if this was my boyfriend that had written this about me so that's like the only way that I can relate to this is if I were if I were this woman and my boyfriend had written this what would I what would be my response to it mm-hmm. um and the the thing that jumped out at me was he said this gorgeous girl fills out every inch of her jeans and she's still the most gorgeous woman yes, in the room. Yes. And I was like, well, wait a second. Why does she have to still be yes, the most yes. beautiful woman in the room? I agree. It's sort of like saying, like, I love this. I, like, this is not my favorite restaurant, but it's still a good restaurant. Yeah. If he had yeah. just taken that still out, yeah. it, it would have said so much more. Um, and he's a writer, so that was an intentional <laughs> he's a writer. still. Yeah. He is a yeah. writer. Um, he's a given, like, TED Talks. He's mm-hmm. a well-spoken, well-thought person. Well, well thought. Oh, well, <laughs> well, we're well, the, 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 we're well, well spoken here too. Right. Uh, yeah. So, if the, am I well thought? I don't know. Not right now. Um, but yeah. I thought 
well, though. Yes, <laughs> I morning. thought well this morning. Uh, yeah, so anyways, he, like, that is that is an intentional word, and which makes me yep. question, do you see something wrong with the way that she is, but you still love her despite it? Like, what is the intention of that word yeah. that you're using? Um, the second thing that, okay, and I, I, this was probably what bothered me the most about it, was his reference to... Um, porn stars as not being real people. Mm. So he was like, real women are not porn stars. They're not mannequins. They're not movie mm. characters. Um, this totally dehumanizes sex workers. And yes. being somebody who knows sex workers, um, it was really offensive to me that this man is putting them in the same category as inanimate objects mm-hmm. and yeah. um, fictional characters. Mm-hmm. Like, Sex workers are human beings. Yes, they're real. <laughs> they are real, and whether you know them or not, or whether you respect what the work that they do or not, they are human beings, and they are real people. So that was my little social justice plug. Like, sex workers are human beings too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and but my third thing was, and this comes back to, I'm not sure of the language that they use in their relationship, but I noticed he kept sort of categorizing and dissecting parts of her body. He talked about her big booty and yeah. her thick thighs and. Her dimples, her dimples mm-hmm. and and what I'm a really big fan of telling people is to not dissect the pieces of your body. Like your mm. body is one entire whole unit. Mm, right. And when I look at someone I love, I look at them as a whole unit. I don't say I love them, but they have this little thing about them. It's true. So yeah. so like let's not look at the people we love and pick them apart and then put it on social media and say, look at all these things that I'm breaking up breaking her body up into Mm -hmm. and let's also not do that to ourselves Mm yeah like let's not say well i would be beautiful if i (laughs) if this wasn't on my body or if my nose looked this way or if my butt was a different size like so as i said i don't know what their conversations are like in their relationship but i'm just overall not a big fan of anybody dissecting or categorizing somebody else's body and i would say the same thing if it was her making those comments about his body. I absolutely agree. I think about this because Julie and I had this conversation after this post came out and I I equate it to if my boyfriend were to post a a picture of us and said, I love my Asian girlfriend despite her having small eyes and small tits, right? Like that's (laughs) what I would equate it to because it's what he's trying to say. The underlining um, meaning of that is she's, She's lacking in these yep. things that are are supposed to be beautiful, mm. but I still find her beautiful right. despite all of that. Yeah. So I think he had okay. So I have very mixed opinions on it. <laughs> so I think he had good intentions. Of course, I absolutely. feel of like course. he had good yes. intentions, and I like the message that's going out there. That's like you don't need this like model thin woman. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, I agree with what you said. It's like almost implying like that's what men all men like only Mm -hmm. is this model thin woman and like we all know like you see people walking around all the time that are in relationships that are not model thin yeah on men and women so it's like the fact that you had to go say that is almost like reaffirming that that is your belief i think it goes into the issue that i have which is why are we celebrating like bodies in general when we should be celebrating people as a whole. Yeah, well, I think this also plays into something else that I was thinking about um, in consideration to, like, who Robbie and Sarah Tripp are. We need to also consider their audience. They have a large media following, Mm. and their audience might not be, um, uh, like, radical body body positivity people Mm -hmm. because if you look at a lot of the comments that were made on um, the BuzzFeed post – a lot of them, you can tell that they are people that have have been really educated in the world of fat acceptance and body positivity. Yeah. But I'm betting that that's not the trip's audience. I and agree. so, yeah. like, I don't think he was speaking to that audience. I think he was, we have to consider, like, what are people ready for? What are they True. ready to see? And you can't always just be like, here is the exactly precise, like, um, politically correct answer, and I'm going to yeah. give it to you, and here it is. Sometimes you have to give people... A little bit of what they need and a little bit of what they want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also what he was doing is like, I want to make an example of how beautiful my wife is, but I want to present it in a way that my audience will be more receptive to it. Yeah, So a lot of the backlash when people did get angry about it, because there were a lot of people that just thought it was very condescending. Mm -hmm. Right. I see that too. And a lot of people were like, well, he's nothing to be that great about. Like, she's so much more beautiful than Uh him. Like, he's scrawny. 
I know we've been talking about women's body images. What are our thoughts about men? Yeah, great segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so when I wrote my book, I didn't really know anything about how men perceived their bodies or if they ever even gave them a second thought. And then after I came out with my book and I started talking about this issue, so I work at a gym with a hundred trainers and all these men, tra- like all these male trainers kept coming up to me and being like, can I talk to you in private for a second? Mm. Pulling me aside and being like, what you posted about, that really resonates with me. Like, I never feel like I can talk about this issue. And Mm. so all these men started coming up to me and making me aware that this is a huge issue for men too Mm. that I had no idea about because I mainly work with women and I hear Mm. women's stories. Um, So I was just, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, like... Thank you. I'm so, like, I'm so happy you have body image issues, too. Right? (laughs) Right? But their issues are just a little bit different because I feel like women women are just so much more accepting of all body types when it comes to men. Like, look at the dad bod movement, right? Like, it's like, it's like sexy to have a dad bod. But women, if we came out with, like, the mom bod movement, <laughs> nobody would fall for that. Nobody would be mom like, bod. yes, let's get that going. I'm so, a fan of the mom bod movement. Yeah, <laughs> let's start it right it, now. What do you think it is, though? Why Why are we more accepting of men who aren't the cookie cutter, like, you know, six-pack? Cats? I would say that this goes, like, way deep into having to dissect, like, masculinity versus femininity. femininity mm-hmm. And, um... Like, you can be emasculated, but you can't be effeminated. Like, there's no there's no equivalent. And so um, I, I think for men, like, they, they hold back, like, these feelings of how they feel about their body image because they're not supposed to express those things. Yeah. Um, but, like, and they feel, like, less of a man for expressing those things. They feel, like, less of a man for, um, as, as have been brought up as examples for me, they feel like less of a man for not having a six pack or for having perfect biceps or for being tall or having large genitalia. Um, (laughs) But for women, like we don't feel like, or maybe I'm just being for myself, we don't feel like less of a woman for not having like a size two body. We just feel like we're not good enough women. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. So I think it it goes back like, I'm probably not the right resource to, like, dive all the way into that. Yeah. But I think that it, it does really go back to masculinity versus femininity. Well, men have a different set of issues, which is always height when it comes height to dating. is a huge You know, one. a lot yes. of them, my shorter guy friends don't put don't post their height on Bumble. Because right. they, they know that they're going to be eliminating a lot of options. Yes. Or they overcompensate for their height by having eight pack abs and like working right. out 24 hours a day right. because they feel like they have to overcompensate for that. So I feel like that's sort of their their equivalent of of insecurities. I don't I don't know how I would tell. I mean, I've had male clients who who've been, you know, short on the shorter side and they say, "Well, how do I take pictures that make me look taller? How do mm, I, you know, like how you do I can't. make my how do I portray myself to be a little bit taller?" And I say, who are you trying to attract? If you're trying to attract the woman who's looking for a taller guy, then you're not going to end up with this girl because she's still going to see you in real life and realize you're not that Right, tall like guy. the jig is up when yeah. we see you in person. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the point I was trying to make earlier about like body image too. It's like mm-hmm. obviously everyone should be at their healthiest, like best self and feeling good. But like I'm never going to be a size two. Like mm-hmm. I'm just never going to be that person. So like... I can't fool a guy into falling for me that only wants a size two. And it's, like, the same with the height, right? So, so it's I would like, say for that, like, instead of trying to figure out how you can, like, trick people into looking at your yeah. profile, I would say, like, don't take pictures of yourself that make you look taller or that, like, give you that shadowy ab look. Yeah. I would say instead, here's my advice. Diversify your dating profile. Mm. Not your profile of you. Like, your profile of people who you date. Mm. So... If you think, like, I have a type, this is the person that I am usually attracted to, stop dating those people and start dating the people who you're a little uncomfortable with dating. Right. Yeah. So, like, really maybe they look different than people you've dated before. Maybe they're not the race you typically date. Maybe they mm-hmm. don't have the background, the income, the educational uh, opportunities that you're used to dating. Like, diversify your dating pool. Um 
because you'd be really surprised at the quality of people that are out there that you are just typically disregarding. And they don't care that you are 5'4 and not 6 feet tall. They don't care that you don't have abs because they're they're the good people that have been or ignored. It's cultural standard of beauty too, right? Like we were talking about earlier how this guy, the Instagram guy was like all men want a thin like slender woman mm-hmm. and that's a white male. Mm-hmm. Like Latino men, like they're oh, used yeah. to curves. They love curves. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. that's a preference, probably. So, like, some of it might just be cultural as well. Well, know your audience. It's like basic marketing 101. Know your audience and then market yourself to that audience. I used to work with this all girl group called the Glamazons in New York. <laughs> I used to choreograph for them and they were God. on America's Got Talent. And they're all size 12 plus. And they're these, like, these beautiful gorgeous glamazons who you know Wait, they, are they drag queens they're not drag queens oh, okay. they're women and they glamazons dance sounds like very drag queeny though <laughs> they're not though but, and fabulous, <laughs> and at, fabulous the same time. at the same time and they dance like pussycat dolls style. okay so they're basically they call themselves the plus size pussycat dolls i got it okay and all of them are in very long-term stable relationships with men that they knew would like them who for who they are they found their audience and they always said to me you know what you a I went to my doctor and I said, listen, what is the healthiest weight I can be at? And Mm. my doctor said, this is, this is it where you are. This is the healthiest weight for you. If you get any skinnier, you're not going to be very healthy. So I accepted that reality and I went with it and I bought everything in this size and said, I'm going to stay this way. As long as I'm healthy, I'm going to stay this way and accept my body for what it is. And they started, all of them started attracting these men who love them for yeah. that body type. Or dress for your body. Or dress for your body. That's a whole other episode, yeah. right? We need a stylist on. So what are our... I have a- one. I, my stylist. <laughs> you can talk to her. She's yeah. amazing. Yes. Whatever. Bring her on. She's so amazing. So what are our takeaways relating all this back to dating? If we had to distill it into a couple things. My biggest takeaway is stop hiding who you are and just... Ex- you have to... Im- embrace who you are today and know that we're constantly evolving. If we're, if you're saying, okay, I want to lose 30 pounds in, in a month. It's the same as me saying, I want to take up soccer in a month. Right? So it's like, if you have a goal of something, we're constantly going to be working towards our goal. So instead of, of giving yourself that deadline of like, it's in 30 days, I'll have enough confidence to go out in, into the world and date and put up my dating profile photos is that you have to show people your journey. I, I think people like seeing that journey. Right. I am who I am today. I know I'm going to be a little bit better tomorrow and a little bit better the yeah. next day, right? Yes. So I want people to come along for the journey as opposed to seeing the end product. Yeah. No, the moment that I stopped trying to be the woman that I thought men wanted me to be in order to be worthy of them dating me, that is actually the moment that I met the love of my life. And mm. it, like he accepts me, he accepts me for who I am and loves me unconditionally because I was absolutely 100% myself from the get-go. And if I had been anything else, I like I would be in a different relationship. And you guys totally. just moved in together, right? We just moved in Woo! together. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I think for men, okay, <laughs> when you're giving compliments, and I, you know, I, uh, I yeah. know some of you are sensitive about this. Oh, I got all kinds to say on this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you're giving us compliments, and I really, we all appreciate oh God, yeah. compliments, but it shouldn't be about your body's banging, right? It shouldn't be about no. your tits look amazing in that shirt. What we want to hear is, you look beautiful tonight. Yes. You look radiant tonight. Yes. We you also know, want to was- hear things like, wow, I really appreciate what an incredible friend you are. Or, oh yeah. my gosh, you're so intelligent and really yep. crushing it at your job. Yes. There's so many things to compliment about people that have nothing to do with their body try and think outside the box of yeah. what those compliments might be. And it might be challenging because we're so used to being like, oh my God, I love your butt today. Like, yep. no, let, let's yep. get outside the box there. We don't have to just compliment body parts. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I when we talk to guys um, and we ask, you know, who are you dating lately? And a lot of times what I hear is, oh, I'm dating this incredible girl. She's so beautiful. Incredible body. Like, 
the body part it's but always, there. always second or third on the yeah. list of things they a talk lot about. Of first. A lot yeah. of times first, too. Or they say she's she's not that great, but her body is amazing. Right. It's almost like it's a redeeming factor. <laughs> And I just think about, like, why is that a redeeming factor? Or why should that be a make or break in general? Like, how do you feel about her personality, her values, her... her how she makes you feel. How yeah. she makes you feel. So let's yeah. stop focusing on that. And I think for you men, is that <laughs> when you stop focusing on women's body, you'll stop focusing on your own body. Because we know you you guys have insecurities. You're just not telling us. <laughs> or at least or as you are telling outspoken us. Yeah. about it. But, you know, let's... Can we go beyond that and just look at someone for their, um, like, you know, wholesome self? Perfect. Well, sometimes I think that men like to date the the hotter women because they mm. tell themselves, oh, the sex is better with a hotter woman. The sex is better when you are truly comfortable with somebody and yes. don't feel like you need to be ashamed of any part of your body and you yep. make them feel comfortable that they don't need to feel self-conscious about anything in their body. Mm -hmm. That's when the sex is the best. So don't worry about what somebody looks like. Worry about, can I trust this person? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go to our question of the day. Oh, we have a Ooh, question, question of the day. day. <laughs> So this comes from Rebecca. Sometimes it feels like all my friends have their lives in order, whether it is a great career, a perfect body, or an amazing relationship. Mm. How do I deal and stop comparing myself to them? Mm. Oh, man. I it's love so this hard. question because I had such, like, a revelation a couple years ago about this exact topic. Do tell. Um, so... I was in one of the rare instances where I took a yoga class, because I'm not a yogi, um, <laughs> but I was, like, we were sitting there meditating, and some reason, like, I guess that week, a bunch of really great stuff had happened for all these girls that I knew. Um, one of them had gotten engaged, and one of them got a promotion, and they were making more money than me, and they'd found another great apartment, or whatever. Like, everybody had all this good shit going on for them, and I was just like, oh, my life is terrible, and I want all these things that they have. So I'm like sitting there meditating and being kumbaya and I have this realization that, wow, I am so lucky to have women in my life who inspire me to be hmm. better. And if I had women in my life where I didn't want their lives, what kind of friendship would that be? Huh. Like, how would that benefit me? So how grateful am I that I have friendships where they inspire me to be a better person? Of course I should want what they have. Hmm. That's why I'm friends with them. Like, you should have friends that make you want to be a better person. Yep. So I would say, first off, everyone is on their own journey. Like, mm -hmm. you are not on the same journey yes. as your friends. Um, if somebody has, it, it appears that they have something better than you, everybody's got their own shit going on behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Nobody has it perfect. And, like, finally, just recognize how lucky you are to have women in your life that inspire you to have a better life. Well said. Very well I have said. I have two things to go off on that. One is it's not a zero sum game. So mm, if yes. someone's happy, doesn't mean that they've taken this chunk of your pie. You right. can have yes. a chunk of that pie as well. If someone's happy, that also means they can share this happy pie with you. <laughs> yes. And it's delicious. I think the second thing I want to say is social media oh is God, what's yeah. causing us to see these highlights. It's a highlight reel of everyone's life. Mm. Nobody's putting up I'm having a terrible day today. I'm um, yep. I'm feeling ugly today. Nobody's putting that up. But you know what we can do is, one, I think we can start ignoring these posts or celebrate people for their highlights in their life. Two, I think we can learn to be more vulnerable ourselves. Yes, amen. I, I find myself having this issue mm -hmm. where when friends ask me, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm great because I feel like I need to yep. put up this this front that I'm like, my life is great. You know, I'm like getting it and I'm go girl, this girl, girl, that. And some days I feel like shit. Yes. <laughs> and there's a reason why I'm feeling like shit because one, I feel like a little bit weak or two, I feel like I failed at something. And it's great to share those vulnerabilities yep. because then it makes you feel one more like a human being and your friends will see you yep. more like a human being. Totally. And I think to piggyback off that really quick, like every, and I think you both have said this too, is like everyone has stuff going on in their life that isn't perfect. And it's easy to fixate on the stuff that you want that they have, but mm -hmm. they could also be admiring stuff about you mm -hmm. that they don't have. So it's all like, it's not really a 
single, like, this person has checked every single box. It yeah. doesn't work that way. And if you have friends who are constantly selling their life, like, how amazing it is and, like, how much they've accomplished. Oh, and there's how more to that story. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You probably should rethink that friendship, right? Yeah. Well, and yeah, they're, if, they're, yeah, they, if you're in a relationship with somebody who always has everything perfect – yeah, absolutely. Reevaluate that friendship because they are probably not being completely honest with you and or or being honest with themselves. When people ask me how I'm doing, I usually give them a way too honest answer. <laughs> like, like, I, like, oh, I couldn't find parking today and now I feel terrible. <laughs> or like, I had terrible gas last night. I didn't get enough sleep. And, and like, people be like, oh, well... Okay. Like, <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> but like, I mean, just just yeah. be honest. Like, you don't have to pretend like everything's great. You just give give the immediate answer that feels most honest to you. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. I think it's so important. Like, what we do with this podcast is to open up this conversation, and women have these in depth conversations all the time, which is what gets us through the day. But I would really empower men out there to mm-hmm. do the same. You know, and I told Julie the other day I was at LinkedIn having lunch and these two guys were <laughs> literally next to me in a booth talking about how much they both miss being in a relationship. And I, I just wanted to go over there and give both of them hugs because I've never actually heard two men talk like this. Yeah. They were like, oh, I was just so much happier when I was with her. How do I find that again? Mm, and I wish more wow. men would have these conversations with our podcast. We find a lot of men listen in really because this is their outlet. Yeah. You know, this is like their way of getting these thoughts across. We know you guys have insecurities. We know you have these issues now it's the time to talk about them. Like, actually get it out there instead yeah. of bottling it up. I think hopefully this episode, too, for men has given some light into the way females think about bodies. So, like we said before, maybe not fixating on body the same level that sometimes does happen today would be a great takeaway. Yeah. Well, if somebody, if if a man is in a relationship, if your partner shares something vulnerable about themselves, share something vulnerable about yes. yourself. Yep. Don't yes. don't just leave them out there in the cold. Like mm-hmm. really appreciate that that person is showing a scary, yep, fragile side of themselves and share something scary and fragile about yourself. Yeah. Totally. And if you want the opportunity to share something scary and fragile about yourself to Natalie, where can they find you? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I love it when people share scary, fragile stuff to me. It just, like I, I love talking about feelings and other people's feelings. I have so many feelings to talk about. Um, yeah, they, I mean they can they can um, find me on Instagram at barbellblondie dot uh, not barbellblondie dot com at barbellblondie. <laughs> Let me say that again. They can find me at barbellblondie on Instagram. And you can just message me directly. I'm I'm not cool enough to delete all of my unknown messages. So I'll actually I will actually read them. And I definitely <laughs> recommend people picking up Everybody Beautiful. Yes. I read it and it was amazing. So definitely recommend it. Thank you. And last but not least, I think we should just go around and share something vulnerable about ourselves. And oh. so our listeners know that we're actual human beings. I'll share this story. Ever since sixth grade, there was a boy named Brandon Foley who called me Little Tits UA. Are you listening? Are you listening, Brandon? Brandon, this is for you. Brandon. And I had the biggest fucking crush on this guy. And I don't know why. But every time he'd see me, he'd be like, Little Tits UA, Little Tits, Little Tits has, Little Tits UA has no tits. Like, he had a song for it and everything. And ever since then, I had this kind of, it's this... I had a complex about my boobs, you know? I'm like, oh my God, I'm a triple A cup. How do I how do I get over this? And for years, I thought about plastic surgery, especially I lived in LA for a little bit. I just felt like maybe this is a natural yeah. next step. In fact, my mom was like, if you want plastic surgery, I'll support you, you know, for for it. I'll I'll give you, you know, she's she's like, I I will totally support that decision. And uh, it took me years to come to terms with it and say, and it really is because I started teaching fitness classes in my dance classes where I'm, I do a lot of like high intensity moves mm-hmm. that someone made a comment was like, you know what? Your moves are really for small boobed women. <laughs> yeah. And it <laughs> and works it made, for you. And it made sense to me. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many other issues that I don't experience because I have smaller boobs totally. and I should just... You know, accept it and own up to it. So that's my little vulnerable vulnerable side. 
anybody share? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about crop tops. Uh, (laughs) I have wanted to wear crop tops my entire life. I love crop tops. I think they are the greatest thing ever. I hear women all the time tell me, I just want to be able to wear a crop top. And I realized a couple years ago, after like stashing crop tops in my drawers all through college and never feeling like I could wear them, I was like, fuck this. I want to wear a fucking crop top. Yeah. And so I've started buying crop tops and wearing nice. them. And like, I don't have perfectly defined abs because that's not my natural body, but I really love wearing crop tops. And it always takes me a little bit to be like, well, are people going to judge me for this? And who then cares? after, after a few minutes, I'm like, who cares? I yeah. look amazing in this crop top. <laughs> so like, just like nice. life is short. Wear the crop top. Wear the crop top. I think mine also stems from middle school. Ooh. It's so funny because you said it too. And it's, it's like always from stuff. middle school. Oh my god. I remember there was this girl that was like my nemesis back then, and I heard her call me roly poly one oh, day. Oh shit. So I mean, no, obviously I'm not like a size two. I will never be a size two. And that is obviously stuck with me for time. However, I think for me, like running and getting into that has been like such an instrumental way to like overcome that because it's like it realized made me realize like how strong I am and my, how my body is built for that. Mm-hmm. So yes, I will never be this tiny sticks thin girl. And I have also like obviously I have insecurities. I'm not going to say I don't, but I've also been lucky enough to have men that I've dated that have also like appreciated my body type mm-hmm. too. Yeah, so, like I know that there are certain men that just aren't going to be attracted to someone that's not super thin. Yep. And that's not the guy for me. Yeah. Exactly. That's not your person. That is exactly. not your person. Uh, cheers to all of this. Cheers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're lovely and beautiful. This, this feels like one of those slumber parties where, <laughs> well, I mean, we're drinking champagne, eating gummies, and we're about to braid each other's hair. <laughs> it's going to happen. But listeners at home, if you have stories you want to share, we want to hear your vulnerable stories your insecurities because this is what makes us human beings if we didn't have these insecurities then we'd be robots and who wants to date a robot it's not fun at all so show us your different dimensions if you have a story that's similar or anything related to dating let us know we love to have you as a guest on the show or even as a question of the day last but not least stay stay dateable your action item for this week is to think about the physical type you normally go for and throw that out the window. Don't get so stuck on the superficial qualities that make someone attractive to you. We've said this before, but it never hurts to say it again. Keep an open mind when it comes to dating. If you keep going for the same type and none of them seem to work out, there's probably a reason for that. This week, step out of your comfort zone and go for someone completely different from your normal physical type. The most efficient way to meet new people is a combination of online and offline. 500 Brunches has your offline covered. Connect over brunch with new friends. Come alone or bring a buddy. There is always a table full of friendly faces, mimosas, and eggs benedict. Sign up at 500brunches.com and use the code DATEABLE for a free entry. To connect with us, visit datablepodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all under Dateable Podcast. Mm-hmm.